What is going down, NVIDIA fans? Today we are looking at a brand new driver support. For the 465 series, we're going to be introduced with the 46647. For about 89% of you, you're brand new. My name is Mac here at the MacGyver 7 channel. I would definitely suggest hitting that subscription button, slamming the notification bell for more future updates as we plow through the patch notes and some benchmarks to match up to see if this driver is good to install and where they're going with NVIDIA. And there is a lot of talk nowadays for their two versions of GPUs. Now there's going to be a light hash and they're going to put the hash on there and then they're going to charge miners more, but gamers are supposed to get the best performance but I don't understand how that's gonna work out considering the virtual RAM is where a lot of the hash comes from so are we gonna get less virtual RAM but that will affect the gameplay so Nvidia's got some very interesting stuff ahead of them but let's go ahead and dig into what is the brand new driver shall we with a sneak peek before we get into the patch notes of what's going down in this brand new driver, we're going to size up DirectX 12 in the 4K department to see if there's anything that's nominally changing. Inside this situation of what is at hand, there's really not 60% around all of the tests and if you're looking at this trying to make sense of it for the first time and returning community members, I will always have it uniformed nowadays to be the new driver on the right hardware accelerator on on the top and hardware accelerator off on the bottom old driver on the left with that being said point for point it definitely does beat it a little bit when it comes down to it but again this is just a well-rounded thing and in 4k this really isn't that huge of an improvement or decreasement now going into the patch notes you can see right over here that we have a very cool PDF from NVIDIA that you can have that linked right over there. But let's go ahead and go into what I like personally myself is their Reddit. Very easy to digest in exactly what's going down. Days Gone is one of the bigger things that has basically been added for as far as that. For the higher distance, they have native 4K renders, 60 frames, unlocks all that really cool stuff with a great story. If you haven't played it, I definitely suggest it. It's one of my faves. I've been replaying it on New Game Plus lately. So on top of that, for as far as the new features and other changes, the driver will be required for the RTX 3080, 3070, 3060 Ti, and you're going to have the LHR, which is going to be shipping later on. They're going to be phasing those into two different versions, like I mentioned before. One's going to be one for the light hash rate for exactly just the gamers. That way it prevents any of the physical miners from doing that but we'll see they've done this before where you know i don't know where people just buy but game ready what is actually being fixed in this driver it's tom clancy the ghost recon breaking point the game experiences some low performance and low frame rates when launching inside the bar enabled for the s bios so as hard as the star base and the g force rtx 20 series and then 16 series the game may crash uh, improvement in open issues, as you can see, as the colors make here a little bit different from the freestyle filters when utilizing HDR. Um, the issue can be resolved with the next NVIDIA driver release. Oh, that's that's really cool that they're actually telling us that this is something definitely is going to be inside of the next one. HDR and some specific HDMI displays may show some flickering in the HDMI in HDR mode for as far as the experiencing flicker issues reboot the system. Wow, Shadowlands and the random flickering occurring inside of certain locations in the game. Batman Arkham Knight and the game crashing inside of turbulent smoke and enabled. And the VR and the shuttering inside of the lagging inside of the GPU hardware monitoring tool in the background. And YouTube has always been an issue, but you can always do a direct X9 port directly around that and it should fix that. But moving on past that, now that we've cleared this, let's look at our benchmarks let's go ahead and finish up directx 12 shall we as we slide into what is time spy in just the 1080p we can see a lot of changes hardware accelerator on time and time again seems to be a problem specific titles will definitely have an advantage inside of there for as far as what they can get and they will advertise a ton of titles which are great uh, it's a nice caveat but moving on past that situation, what we can see is that the hardware accelerator has really kind of failed NVIDIA in my personal opinion. And I think they should just go back to a unified portion and work with Windows to just have it accelerated all the time. I think that's just a little bit smarter. 
But moving on past that, if you are experiencing some issues, it's seeming with the test results that hardware accelerator off with newer driver and older driver consistently will show better performance. But again, these are not percentile breaking. So let's go ahead and look at our fire strikes in DirectX 11 before we get to the Port Royales. Now, with looking at the Fire Strike Ultra, there was actually a very interesting thing with the newer driver, which I thought pertained to more of the 4K users, especially with the newer cards. Um, when you look at the test back to back again, hardware accelerator seems to fail you, and most of them are keeping up to the 7A3 until you get to the hardware accelerator off on the brand new driver. And you can see there's actually a pretty good leap on the graphics score. Um, definitely for as far as you can see some physics, which is going to be your your actual physical CPU running in tandem with that graphics card. But to get a better performance that drastic, that's pretty good for as far as the graphics portion. So hopefully people are experiencing some good things in DirectX 11. Let's see if that trend continues. Now with Fire Strike Extreme on the chopping block, there's some interesting things to take a look at. As you can look at where it goes with Hardware Accelerator off and on, and you can make the assumption that Hardware Accelerator off is going to win. And in some cases, yes. But when you look at the graphics scores and match them up, where the Hardware Accelerator on on the old driver does a very good job for as far as the graphics, though the CPU and physics may tank a little bit for as far as the performance in the situation, but it prefers graphics score looking at the extreme version down on the hardware accelerator off with the newer driver you can see that it runs better the physics is up the graphics score is up and the graphics score is beating the other one so the newer driver is going to win seems like when it comes down to fire strike now as we just explained before we can see that the Hardware accelerator on the old driver graphics score definitely does take a lead, but with the hardware accelerator off on the newer driver, it definitely evens out. So if there is some gameplay resistance with certain games and you need to update, you're not going to be taking that big of a loss. But ray tracing, what does ray tracing do for us? And that's the question that a lot of people should be asking as ray tracing is implementing itself into today's modern gaming performance and gameplay. With ray tracing now on the skillet, what's cooking up with performance? Point for point seems to be hardware accelerator off with the newer driver. It's almost identical with the, I guess, stick in the river for just holding back on the hardware accelerator on for either of the newer driver or the old driver. But you definitely do have some performance. Now again, not percentage breaking, but still a move in the right direction. So everyone, that's going to bring us to the tail end of our patch notes. If you're brand new, I would definitely say subscribe. It helps me out as a creator, and it's absolutely free. And if you do today, who knows? Maybe Jensen will send me a classic 3090 Ti, or just a 3090, you know, because they're going to release some up until May, and then a little filtered out depending on the partners and what they have, and then it's going to break off into this whole division of just mining CPUs and just gaming CPUs so people get what they want. So, very interesting debacle, but what do you feel is comfortable with that situation? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear what the community has to say about that topic, about what's going to be rolling out probably full-fledged within June, if not pushing forward past that. I'll see you guys and gals in the near future. Stay safe, stay classy, and I'll see you there.